welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and impact of emerging science and technology. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and I'll be your host. We've made it to April, but March hasn't been an easy month with the spread of COVID-19. This global pandemic highlights the need for an ongoing prioritization of science and medical research. Let's take a look back at some examples of just that. National Geographic Books has recently released a new book titled Immortality, Inc., Renegade Science, Silicon Valley Billions, in the Quest to Live Forever. This book features an exclusive look at some of the major players in longevity science, and it provides a dive into the lives, motivations, and work of some names you'll certainly recognize. I recently explored this book on an episode of my Future Grind podcast, in which I sat down with the book's author, Chip Walter. Here are some clips that explain the background and focus of the book. I think I've always had kind of a fascination with this question, uh, probably going back to whenever I was a kid reading myths and maybe a few comic books. And and then the other work that I've done, the other scientific work that I've done and documentaries that I've worked on, uh, I've just met a lot of different scientists. And actually, this particular book, I think, came together or really consolidated itself whenever I was talking with a, a scientist by the name of Ralph Merkel. He's an expert in nanotechnology, but he was also uh, one of the people that co-created key encryption technology, which enables us all to make uh, transactions on the internet. And so we were just having lunch, uh, actually, uh, you know, when I was working on another project. And he out of nowhere mentioned that he was planning to freeze himself when he died. And, uh, and then hopefully down the road, whenever, you know, the science had advanced to a point where he could be, you know, brought back to life uh, and solve the, the problems that had killed him in the first place. And I just kind of put my fork down <laughs> at lunch and, uh, and said, really, uh, you know, tell me more about that. And so he explained, I, I put this all in the book, actually, it's, it's the opening of the book, uh, you know, but I explained that he, he just felt that hey, what's the downside? You know, um, everyone's going to die, so I may as well give it a shot. And, you know, I I eventually explored this in the book, but it just began to make me think, oh, well, this this takes some science, you know, and and this was a scientist. And it turns out there are a lot of people that are scientists that are involved in the whole company, which is called the Alcor Life Extension Foundation. And, you know, so I just thought, Maybe it's time to really see where science is at with this question. This is a question that humans have been grappling with from the beginning of time, uh, going all the way back to Gilgamesh and probably before that. I mean, from the moment that we became conscious enough to even think about our own death, I think we've probably been wondering about it. And so um, I thought, are we at a time in human history where science could actually solve this problem. And, and that's when I first began to look deeply into it. And then, of course, I found that there uh, you know, were some incredibly uh, you know, important scientists and some big money that was getting involved in this. And I thought, maybe this is the time to tell the story. I can tell you categorically that I wouldn't have done the book if I couldn't get to people like Arthur Levinson, who's the chairman of Apple, and had been on the board of Google and was the chairman and CEO of Genentech, the first biotechnology company, or Craig Venter, you know, who was central in advancing the first sequencing of the human genome, Robert Hariri, who, you know, kind of emerged in the course of writing the book, who's probably one of the world's leading stem cell experts, Uh, Aubrey de Grey, who's been, you know, an important figure in longevity science now for a good 20 years, who's really ahead of his time, and Ray Kurzweil, who's maybe further ahead uh, of the curve than than anybody, uh, you know, an an incredibly well-known scientist and futurist and inventor. I mean, he invented the electronic piano, he invented optical character recognition software, and whenever you listen to Siri or Alexa, it's really his uh, inventions that made, you know, that kind of created the foundation for being able to speak to machines and then have them talk back to you. So, yeah, it was 
quite a cast. And but when I saw that those people were emerging, my biggest challenge was really, can I get to them? You know, and will they talk to me? And luckily, I was able to get to to them and spend lots of time with them and really uh, learn about the work that they're doing. And also, I think very importantly, learn who they are and why this is important to them. You know, what was their life like? What what motivated them? You know, I really wanted to write the book almost like a novel, you know, rather than just a, you know, your standard science survey sort of book. I was able through Ray Kurzweil, who I had, as, as a journalist, I had interviewed Ray Kurzweil a few times over the last several years. And so I, I asked him if he had access, you know, to Arthur Levinson and Calico, because I knew that that was largely funded by Google. And I knew that Ray Kurzweil was at Google. And uh, so he was able to open that door and, 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 you know, he said, well, I, I think I'd like to talk to Chip, you know, and, uh, and Ray had actually said, well, I, it's okay. You know, I, I think we can, we can, you know, don't, don't worry. Chip's a, you know, Chip, you can trust Chip. He's, he's a solid journalist. And, uh, you know, and Art, Art said, uh, no, I think I'd like to talk to him. So he sent me an email and he said, can you spare five minutes to, to talk about this? And, and I thought, well, yeah, I suppose I can spare five minutes to talk with the chairman of Apple. So uh, we had the conversation and we ended up talking for about a half an hour. And, uh, and he, his biggest concern was that he didn't want to, you know, over publicize it or, you know, write exaggerated, you know, any, anything that was exaggerated in the book, his whole thing is just let the science speak for itself. That's kind of the way he is. And he, and despite the fact that he's the chairman of Apple, almost nobody really knows about him. Uh, he just tends to run things under the radar. And so for some reason or another, uh, well, he actually still didn't agree to talk with me about it. And I said, well, why don't I come out and we'll, we'll talk face to face. And, uh, we did that. And, uh, and, and as a result of that conversation, he said, OK, I'll talk with you. And truthfully, even other people in the company, multiple other people in the company that I talked with, some of his top people said to me, how did you ever get Art to talk with you about this? He just doesn't talk to anybody about it. And I said, I honestly don't know, but I'm glad that he is. And, uh, you know, there isn't anything special about it, except I suppose he trust, trusts that, uh, you know, what I was going to write was going to be accurate and fair. And, and, and I, I suppose we should make a point of saying we're not talking about people living an extra five or 10 or even 20 years. We're talking about people living hundreds of years. Um, and, and that's the kind of science that, that this could change. And obviously, if we start to do that, well, it just capsizes absolutely everything. I mean, economics, personal relationships, religion, you name it. It all changes radically. And when you sit down and think about it, over the last 3.8 billion years, every living thing on Earth has at some point or another died. Uh, and this would change that. So there's immense ramifications down the line. And I'm sure that many of the ramifications could be unintended consequences. I mean, there aren't very many things that we've done that aren't unintended, you know, large technological advances. And this is a huge one. My belief is this. If this happens, and again, I believe it will happen, uh, it's going to happen. It's not as though people are going to say, mm, that's okay, I'll die. I mean, there may be a few people that will say that, but by and large, you know, no member of the human race is going, if, if, if someone walks up to them and says, I can extend your life significantly and you're going to be healthy, is going to say, oh, I'll pass on that. So really what we have to do as a society is we have to accept that this is coming and prepare for it. To listen to the full interview, you can subscribe to the Future Grind podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever podcasts are found. Be sure to leave a review and tell your friends about the show, as this will help spread the word. New episodes of our Life Extend show have also been released on topics such as telomere attrition and whether or not aging is a disease. Find these episodes and more on our website as well as on our YouTube channel. And now for a research roundup. A team of researchers led by Dr. Jeffrey Millman at Washington University may be a step closer to a potential solution to diabetes according to the results of a new study in which replacement beta cells were given to mice. These replacement beta cells caused their blood sugar levels to normalize and caused their diabetes to be functionally cured for a period of up to nine months. The caveat, of course, is that this is an animal trial 
so the results may not necessarily translate to humans. And even if they do, it could take some time before they get through human clinical trials. A new study published in the journal Aging further supports the idea that a healthy microbiome is a significant determinant of longevity and health, and its results show that the microbiome can also be transferred between species. The researchers here took the unusual approach of using fecal transplants taken from long-lived people and giving them to mice. The mice were then examined to see if there were positive changes to the populations of beneficial bacteria living in their guts. It turns out that the mice that were given these fecal transplants had a greater gut microbiome diversity, and their intestinal structure was improved for better nutrient absorption. Researchers from Ajax Therapeutics and other organizations have proven the feasibility of reprogramming banked cells derived from a supercentenarian. Cellular reprogramming is the process of reverting mature, specialized cells into induced pluripotent stem cells, which can develop into any cell type found in the human body. The researchers used banked lymphoblastoid cell lines, or LCLs, which were taken from a 114-year-old supercentenarian and reprogrammed to give rise to induced pluripotent stem cells. Their discovery could offer exciting new possibilities for aging research. Also on the topic of reprogramming, a new study published in Nature Communications indicates that researchers from Johns Hopkins Medicine have successfully used stem cells to repair diabetic damage to retinal blood vessels. The team will now be following up this initial success with further studies to refine their approach. Researchers from the Medical College of Georgia have demonstrated in a new study that visceral fat is harmful to the brain because it can cause the cytokine interleukin-1 to infiltrate the brain, leading to inflammation and brain damage. The microglia, which normally help keep our brain healthy, become harmful and damage the very tissues they are designed to protect due to the negative signaling of inflammation. Given that chronic inflammation is a well-known driver of aging and the decline of health, and that excessive visceral fat appears to aggravate the problem greatly, it makes sense to avoid excessive weight gain. A new mouse study from China has found that injecting healthy mitochondria from young mice into older mice improves learning and memory, skeletal muscle function, and immune system activity. One finding of note was that older mice treated with the new mitochondria saw a huge improvement in their muscle endurance and were able to swim for nearly twice as long as they were before the therapy. While the older mice who were treated did not perform as well as the younger mice on any of the memory, learning, or endurance tests, they did improve, and there were no reported adverse effects from the therapy. Researchers from the University of California, Irvine, have demonstrated that mitochondrial transplants can give cells a boost of energy and could potentially be the basis of therapies to address various cardiovascular, neurodegenerative, and metabolic diseases. This study shows for the first time that the transplanting of mitochondria from not just the patient's own cells, but other cells, from both humans and rats, leads to a short-term boost in cellular energy, effectively supercharging the cell for a short time. This has potential as a therapy in which a short-term increase of energy and performance could be useful, such as during repairs following damage to the heart. That's it for our research roundup. For more information on any of these topics, visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. And now for some news nuggets. Researchers from the universities of Harvard and Tel Aviv have succeeded in linking up 10 organs on a chip via an analog of human vasculature. The invention allows for in vitro testing of drug toxicity and action, taking us one step closer to automated clinical trials and the development of personalized drugs. Earlier this year, the CEO of Illumina gave a presentation in which he reaffirmed his company's intention to drive the cost of human genome sequencing down to $100. This has ramifications for every branch of medicine, including rejuvenation biotechnology. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Undoing Aging has postponed its annual conference until October 2020. Also, a quick note for our Mitomouse backers, all of the swag items have been ordered, However, due to the pandemic, shipping has been halted until the California shelter-in-place order is rescinded. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related diseases. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, 
and post about us on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and on behalf of the team at LEAF, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Music